Welcome back to Adobe Live, live from Adobe Max 2017 here in Las Vegas. And for the next hour, I'm going to be together with Emily Ann Hoffman. Hey, Emily, how Hi. are you? Hi, good, how are you? Emily is a filmmaker, an animator, and an award-winning uh, filmmaker, actually. Yeah, we're going to talk about that a little bit and uh, some of the projects that you're working on. And then we're also going to be looking um, a little bit at her workflow, at how things happen on uh, how you do things, right? <laughs> so, Emily, why don't we start with, uh, you know, you telling us a little bit, who is Emily? Yeah. What does Emily do? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm Emily Ann Hoffman. I'm an animator, a filmmaker, and an artist. So, my background is in illustration and in visual arts. Um, I started as a painter, drawer, and then started getting into animation in college. I went to RISD, Rhode Island School of All Design. Right. So a lot of Adobe products there. Yeah. Um, and then uh, from animation, started getting into the independent film world. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I ended up here. Um, I made a film last year called OK Call Me Back that I submitted to the Sundance Ignite Challenge. Right. Young filmmakers, 18 to 24, and is selected. And so I've had this year-long fellowship of mentorship for emerging filmmakers through Sundance and Adobe. And so it's really exciting to be that's here. The, that's the project 1324, right? Yes, that's, correct. That's what it's called, the Adobe yeah. Project 20, uh, 1324. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like somebody walked past me before and said, oh, Project 1234. No, yeah. no, 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 Project 1324. <laughs> I think because it's ages 13 think, through right? 24, yeah. yeah. So is animation and uh, and this filmmaking thing something that, that you've always wanted to do or did that come with your studies? I think I knew I always wanted to do it, but subconsciously. Like okay. I would, I knew I wanted to be an artist always, but um, I didn't think I wanted to be in film. And then I realized like all of my daydreams happened as if like I was in a movie or if okay. I was making a movie. All and right. so, so then when I started doing that, now. I was like, oh, this makes so much sense. <laughs> Why I think yeah. this way, because uh -huh. I want to make these yeah. things. And did you have support from your family or? Did yes. everybody want you to be a doctor or lawyer or something? No. No, thank okay. God. Oh, I would be awesome. a terrible yeah, doctor. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, my family was super supportive. They just wanted, as long as I was working hard at whatever I wanted to do, yeah. they That's were supportive. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So shout out to mom and dad. I think That's you're watching right now. That's how parents behave. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Support their creative children. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. In RISD, that, uh, that's, a, that's a great school. Um, uh, I've, I've, I've actually presented there a few times oh, cool. as well. Um, I went to the Art Center. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Myself, so, in uh, Chicago? No, in uh, Art Center College of Design. Oh, okay. In, uh, Los Pasadena. Cool. Right so yeah, so let's talk a little bit about you know your your award-winning <laughs> movie or something that you're working on now. Yeah, so I have my website up here. Okay, call me back was my um, Sundance film that I just mentioned, and that one was actually my first live-action film. Um, so that premiere editing process is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to show you, uh, talk about Nevada, which is a, a new film that I just finished okay. earlier this year, and it's stop motion animated. Um, so, But it's got some elements of rotoscoping that I animated in Photoshop, so I thought we'd walk through right. That's awesome. that process. Yeah. So I thought maybe it makes sense to show a clip first from the film. Um, just a little context, uh, the film is about, how do I full screen this? There we go. Um, the film is about a young couple who has a birth control mishap, and then they have to take, talk about taking emergency contraceptives. Okay. So this is a scene from them in the pharmacy um, finding Plan B and having to take okay. it. So it's about a minute. Now we're rolling. There's no dialogue yet. <laughs> abdominal pain, breast tenderness, and vomiting. Wait, that that's 50 bucks. It's 49.99. Okay, 49.99. What if we what if we try to take action instead? We could save 10 bucks. You want me to try some poorly named knockoff contraceptive so you can save $5? No. I'll just buy the plan B myself if you really need the money that badly. No, never never mind. I it was just a suggestion. Um, we should get you the plan B. I'll pay for it. My treat. Uh, Eli. I, I insist. So, anyways, you couldn't hear what they were saying. 
No, I couldn't. <laughs> they're but talking. I hope you guys about, could hear it. <laughs> yeah. They're talking about uh, having to. They're buying Plan B, and it's expensive, mm -hmm. and it's bad for her. Um, so that's the dialogue that's going on. But I think you, you guys can see that it's stop motion animated puppets. So those puppets I handmade, and then. Um, their faces are rotoscoped, so hand-drawn animation in Photoshop. So people here are saying, so cool. Oh, yeah. yay, great. And Gabby, Gabby is from Latin America, and KKK means ha ha ha. <laughs> really? Yeah, Did it's you, a you know that? Scene. Yeah, it's so right. Yeah. You're supposed to laugh. I'm glad <laughs> yeah. she's laughing. Um, so cool. We could hear it. All right. Okay, awesome. perfect. So, okay, so just a little, pardon me, this. Um, my file is 4K, so it might have a little lag. Um, but anyway, so here is my Premiere file, and you guys can see it's like there's a lot going on here. Um, so, what, how I started was by recording voice actors. So with animation, you need your dialogue first mm -hmm. before you can start animating so that you know the timing of everything. Because not like live action filmmaking, you don't want to shoot anything extra, because yeah, yeah. an extra second is 12 extra pictures. Yeah. And <laughs> it's really annoying. <laughs> so, um, here are all my different layers. So up top, these are my layers of their faces. So if I go like that... Yeah, so Eli, the male character, his face just disappeared. Um, and then this is Zoe's face. So, what I'm going to do is, take, is show you guys these layers, which is, this is Jonathan. So this is my male voice actor. Mm -hmm. He's really talented. His name is Jonathan Randall Silver. Um, and you can see that I put them in this like crazy contraption. Oh, so their head doesn't move. Exactly. Ah. So we built this <laughs> DIY kind of like motion capture thing. So um, Jonathan is strapped in with a helmet and a life vest to a chair. And I used this uh, video image to decide how I draw his face. You see when he starts talking, and that's Zoe's face up in the corner. Um, so, and then down here is the animation itself. So how I started was I just started editing the actual animation footage without the faces. First I edited, made an animatic and edited the... Um, the voice actor's dialogue and had some hand-drawn storyboards, which unfortunately I don't have in this file right now. And then from that, I animated the stop motion. And then from there, I would export the stop motion sequences and the live action sequences of my actors' faces, mm -hmm. and I'd open Photoshop. So that's the file that I'm going to show you next. It is You guys can see how chaotic my files are. Yeah, Judith says, recently started dabbling in stop motion. I feel your pain. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so this again is uh, Zoe. This is my voice actor for my female. Her name is Chet Siegel, also talented. Um, so she's strapped in that contraption. She looks like a crazy construction worker. Um, so we'll open this file. I've got my cheat sheet of files to open. Okay. So it's going to take a second to load. Yeah, it's yeah. Big. It's a big file. Yeah. Do you work always work on a laptop, or do you have a? No. So a little. A plug, big machine. <laughs> I was very fortunate with this project. I had a fellowship with the Jacob Burns Film Center mm -hmm. in Westchester, mm -hmm. New York, and they also support emerging artists. Mm -hmm. So I had applied with a project proposal. Okay. And then they took me in, gave me a studio space, gave me a really nice computer. All right. So some of this stuff I would do on my laptop, but most of my editing I was fortunate enough to do um, cool. on a big desktop. Yeah, so this is the Photoshop file. So I started with, here you can see uh, Chet's face. And you can increase this. It's like, a, it's like an earthquake here. I know, it's, it's so weird. They're shaking, I don't they're know why. They're shaking. <laughs> um, so that's my voice actor's uh, video. So. I started by importing the video, and if you take away all these layers, you'll see what I was animating with. So, oh, so you do you actually also do animation in Photoshop itself? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. So my actual animation right. was in Photoshop. So here are the characters. This is what the puppets look like without their faces. And then what I would do is I would drag in the video footage of my voice actor, and lower the opacity so I could see where it was, and then frame by frame adjust her face so that I was mapped to um, my character's face. Wow. So right here you can see um, I had these little red dots to indicate mm -hmm. where I should line up the mouth. 
um, and then I would start drawing the outline for the lips. And then fortunately I had a lot of animation assistants for this stage and then I would pass this file onto them and then they would add ah, the in the color. <laughs> yeah, so they, I had a lot of colorists essentially. Mm -hmm. And I can try to scroll through this, but it's, it's gonna be slow because it's really big. Um, yeah, so you can see right now, they, that's why their mouths have that shaky quality is because mm -hmm. I drew every single frame separately. And then over here, let's see when she starts talking. Um, so I had a bunch of different cameras set up on my actors. So you can see, oops, I'll take away this. Um, I would change the, the point of view. So right now that's a straightforward camera and then mm -hmm. I would make sure it's the correct angle. Um, and then I would just basically like move Chet's face around to line up correctly mm -hmm. and trace it. And then, and then I did the eyes separately, the eyes and the eyebrows. And you know, with the eyes and the eyebrows, I started to take some liberty with not following mm -hmm. them all the time because sometimes I wanted the character to you know roll their eyes or yeah, furrow yeah. their brow, and the voice actors react differently. So yeah, that was pretty much it. And then when I was done, I would export everything except for the videos and then overlay it back into the Premiere file and that's what this guy is. So if you take that away, Zoe's face disappears. And then she's back again. Oh wow. Yeah. So that was pretty much it yeah. oh. for that. <laughs> yeah, that's it. No, that's a great workflow like um, like using like a combination of Photoshop animation and Premiere. Mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I love Photoshop. I use it for all my illustration mm -hmm, work mm -hmm. as well. Um, so it's just like it feels natural to me. Mm -hmm. And all right, are there any part, part other parts of the movie that that you can show here that use that, different things? Yeah, sure. Um, I guess I could show actually um, some kind of like DIY. I started trying to teach myself After mm -hmm. Effects. Yes. Um, for some post work. Have you tried Character Animator? No, I haven't mm -hmm. yet. Yeah. I've dabbled in After Effects, uh -huh. but to be honest, it definitely doesn't mm -hmm. come naturally to me. Okay. Um, but it's something that I'm looking mm -hmm. to learn more about. Okay. Yeah. Do you have you experienced what's Character Animator? No, Character Animator is an application that I mean, it, uh, we talked about it during the keynote as yeah. well. Is, um, uh, basically, um, yeah, yeah. With the camera, it tracks your face and animates mm -hmm. the parts of uh, an animated character cool. that you know, like you can tilt your head and talk yeah. and move your eyes and it'll recognize it and actually animate it that way. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so we talked about, we tried to, do, we did some like motion graph, motion uh, tracking tests mm -hmm. and I was thinking about doing it in a couple different ways, but um, this story was important to me because it's like supposed to be a very authentic and real mm -hmm. story and um, my voice actors, you know, like certain voice actors for animation will do like more character mm -hmm. voices. It was really important to me that they had like authentic, just like yeah, as if they were yeah, acting yeah. a live action movie. And so that's kind of why I wanted to do this rotoscope method because it felt like you can feel their actual expressions. Is this something you invented or did you, is that, because uh, people of course mentioned that uh, sometimes, you know, uh, usually, you know, like face tracking dots and stuff like that, but it's, it's not really that, but what, what you use, you know, like yeah. you just block their heads in space and talk. <laughs> I definitely didn't invent rotoscoping, yeah, so yeah. I think most no. people know what rotoscoping is, yeah, but yeah. if you don't, it's like uh, tracing a live action video yeah, frame yeah. by frame to animate. Um, that was not invented by me, but this particular technique, I guess, we invented it. I, okay. I don't know if invented is the right word as yeah, much yeah. as just like, like blocking out. your blocking your actors in a chair and yeah that definitely <laughs> yeah that was unique and yeah. uh, I'm really happy with how they handled <laughs> that challenge I think they did a really good job um, and it's yeah and they actually had to record separately from each other um, so I think they did a really good job cool based on that but yeah so I can show you um, what I did in After Effects. Um, because here, so in this file, I can show you guys. Um, so stop motion, you have to, uh, here you can see right here on the floor, you have to drill your character's feet down into the ground. Mm. So they left these footsteps, which were basically me oops, um, with clay filling in the holes that their feet left behind. So if we play that for a sec, you can see, um, how the character's feet left little marks. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, which is 
Mm. Kind of cute, but not intentional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let's see. Um, okay, let's see. This is. I think we call it pharmacy steps. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is the right one. Let's see. And it would actually be great. I'm interested to hear what people have to say about my methods for doing this mm -hmm. because I was just like watching a lot of YouTube videos and figuring it out on the spot. And I'm sh there's probably better ways to do this than how I did it. All right, let's use the power of the chat. The power of the chat, people, tell me what I did right and wrong. Um, yeah, so see here you see all these little keyframes. I was, I was just masking the characters. So basically I took a slate, um, so a clean shot of the pharmacy without any footsteps on the ground, um, and then used that as a background, and then masked the characters. So it worked pretty well. You see the mask moves, I, I just did it by hand, because there weren't too many scenes and each character has their own mask. Um, but the difficulty that I encountered was that, oops, sorry. See, I told you, uh, no, no, that's After fine. Effects isn't my <laughs> home. Um, you can still see some of their footprints because what I did with some of the shots is I used the, the clone stamp tool mm -hmm. to erase it but then what would happen was if another character's foot yeah. passed it their foot would get messed up. So did you up. see the sneaks yesterday? Yes that, I that's did. That's something yeah one and of so those sneaks was something that could solve that problem quite rapidly. <laughs> yeah that was really exciting because this was a lot of trial and error mm -hmm. and if there were more scenes with these mm -hmm. footsteps it would have been such a pain mm. in my butt. To so do just this. to recap, the, these these footsteps are, are just the, the signs for where the character moves. Like yeah. So basically, um, the characters. I don't know if I have photos of my puppets. Um, Look, we have one here. Oh, cute. That's a puppet. Um, yeah, I was looking for. Oh, yeah. So they're made out of. Um, they have wire and then foam and then latex and then they have holes in their feet, okay. like little screw holes. Mm -hmm. So this was a, a wooden slab, this set that I built. Um, and so I just literally drill through mm -hmm. the wood and then okay. take a screw and you uh, screw yeah. underneath. So it's called tie downs, okay. that process. Um, so you don't want your character leaving behind yeah. drill holes. So basically also like how, how when you do the stop motion, like how, how, what's your, do you have reference pictures from be, from before and after, and like, like how to put the movement in, or how, how do you do that? How do you how organize How do I figure your out like yeah. the movement of the yeah. characters? It's a lot of me by myself pretending to be the characters. Okay. So just like walking. Sometimes I'll take a video of it. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes just the acting it out helps okay. me understand the movement more. And so um, there's this scene. And this little bit um, where, let's see. Um, oh, you know what? I can show you here. It's probably faster. The character, okay, so this character, Eli, uh, they walk into the house. Okay. Um, and he sits down on the bed, takes his shoes off and then puts the pillow behind his face. Mm -hmm. And so that, I just wanted it to be like a really natural, it's supposed to be, you know, millennials hanging out in yeah, Airbnb yeah. and like mm -hmm. what did we do when we're staying somewhere is we just okay. get comfortable <laughs> and then go on Instagram or whatever. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So that was me just like by myself in my animation studio, mm -hmm. like lying down yeah, a yeah, bunch yeah. of times, pretending to put a pillow behind my head. So sometimes I work off of videos, but for the most part, it's just acting it out. So this next project is how long is that project? This itself, it's twelve minutes. Twelve, 12 minutes. minutes and seven seconds. Twelve minutes and seven seconds. Yeah. So one of the questions, of course, in the chat, how long did it take you to do it? Yeah. So production was about five months. Five months. Okay. Yeah. I had written the script beforehand, and then when I got into the Jacob Burns Film Center, that fellowship, they helped me um, edit the script a little bit, and we kind of went from pre to post. Mm -hmm all there but I was I was there every single day so it was okay. like five days a week wow. um, at least nine to five or similar time range and then towards the end this rotoscoping process 
was oh, like yeah, no yeah. sleep time. Uh -huh. um, so I was very great, lucky to have a lot of people helping me out with that process. Um, and then the, the post work that I just showed you in After Effects, that was like on and off for about a month afterwards. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that was kind of just when I had the time. But post production, yeah. Yeah, it's afterwards. It's afterwards. afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, so, how, how many people worked with you on that? Um. I had a, let's see, I had um, a fabrication intern, which was great. That was someone fabrication working. fabrication intern? So fabrication, just someone helping me make things. Okay, oh, So right. she um, helped me make some, this really cool bathtub that's in the scene later. Or the shelves in the... Um, the shelves, so, yeah, the so there's this bathtub. So, uh, pardon the, uh, is it okay if I show stop motion boobs on... <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> so, yeah, there's this... Um, bathtub that she helped me make it's really beautiful um, yeah so I basically had uh, an intern um, my producer Sean Weiner who runs the fellowship program a lighting designer Russell Pabord who um, made some really incredible lighting choices with me like this whole backdrop was just a white psych that he lit really well um, Gary helped me make all my sets. He's very handyman, and he cut all of the wooden boxes to wrap the condom la labels around. Okay. Um, and then just like a number of friends helping me with odds and ends. So awesome teamwork. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's it was actually um, uh, the program is also called Creative Culture, and it's uh, young filmmakers in the area working together. So we would meet once a week and discuss either people's projects. So everyone in that program at some point helped me color in some faces yeah. and gave feedback and stuff like that. So Sarah says, I love hearing how people troubleshoot the resourcefulness that goes into projects like this. Yeah. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, it's a lot of resourcefulness. Yeah, it was a lot of teaching myself, but also a lot of asking just friends, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Do you have to make duplicates of each character? Yes, that's a good question. So there's actually two puppet bodies. Mm -hmm. Their heads are sculpy, mm -hmm. and they have magnets at their necks. So okay, you can actually, so you can see, you know, here. Yeah, yeah. She's got this little turtleneck line. Mm -hmm. That's because her head snaps off. Okay. So they've got, <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of like funny playing around with that. Um, mm -hmm. They have two bodies because the wire, if you bend it too many times, it eventually mm -hmm. breaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually, the the female character kind of as soon as I started animating her. Um, her foot broke, so I was really glad that I had a backup, a backup pu yeah. puppet. Yeah. So two bodies, one head for each character. There's, there's, so there's four big puppets total, and then there's like this little baby that pops in sometimes because when they're so basically about it. the heads don't have any facial expression. Like no. Facial thing. You do all, you did all that in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we did some tests. I wonder if I can find some. I don't know if I have my original face test mm -hmm. left, but I just, you know, on my iPhone, started recording my face mm -hmm. and then mapped it onto a sculpty head that I mm -hmm. made and drew some janky Some more questions things. here. What material do you use for your characters? So they have wire skeletons. Um, this stuff called Propoxy, it's like a plumber's uh, clay that is really strong so that was their bones so that you know if I want their elbow to bend the whole arm doesn't bend so yeah, there's bones okay, here yeah. and then uh, foam like puppet foam that I just carved mm -hmm. and glued on it and then I painted it at the end with acrylic uh, with latex mm -hmm. and then mix in some acrylic for their wow. skin tones <laughs> yeah so that's why they look kind of like shiny and clay like it's from the latex okay and Dylan says, do you still have them? I do. Yeah? They're in my room. All right. <laughs> which I actually had someone subletting my room, and I forgot to move them afterwards. Ah, so okay. I think they probably thought I was really weird having <laughs> yeah. these like lumpy, naked dolls in my room. <laughs> so yeah, so Sarah, it's not clay. That's why it doesn't dry out over time. Yes. Right? Yeah, it's not yeah. claymation. There's actually, I don't think there was any clay in this at all. It was yeah. all physical objects that we used. So Helen is asking, what's your Instagram? Oh. It's Emily Ann Amation. So I think my you have your website open. Yeah, here. This is my website, ehoffmanportfolio.com. Down um, there is everything you need to. This is Instagram, Emily Ann Amation. That's me. So yeah, come hang out with me, and uh, mm -hmm. you can. Um, if anyone's based in New York, there will be a screening of this film in Greenpoint on the 27th. There you go. Those so, of you in New York. You know what to do on yeah, the 27th. Yeah, you can come see it. I think I posted it here. Uh, there's like a bunch of showtimes. Um, we just screened a couple places, and 
there'll be no, more places coming up. So um, yeah, I'd love for people to come out and see it, and you know, eventually it'll be on Vimeo. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about you know the uh, the Sundance thing yeah. um, and Project Thirteen Twenty Four. What was all that about? It was incredible. <laughs> um, so how did it start? How, how, how did you you know uh, what happened? How did it happen? <laughs> so basically. I told you about this fellowship I had with the Burns. I got that, and I had this plan to make this film that I just showed you, Nevada. And as soon as I got there, um, Sean Weiner, who runs the program, was like, hey, congratulations on this fellowship, but FYI, there's this other fellowship with Sundance that we really want you to apply to right now. Okay. So he was like, can you make another short film in two weeks? Wow. And so I was like, ah, maybe. Um, so uh -huh. me and my fellow fellow, Leah Gallant, who's at the Burns with me, we both made a film in two weeks, and that's um, okay. this one. Okay, Call Me Back, which is on Vimeo. You can watch it. Let's um, watch it. You want to watch it? It's yeah. five minutes. You guys down? Yeah, let's let, I mean, if, if people get bored, we can stop it. <laughs> but I, I'm, okay, I'm sure it's lovely. Okay, So bored. this is the one that, that, what, that you made for Project 1324. Yes, correct. Okay, in two weeks. In two weeks. All right. Yes. Here we go, and this is my first live action film. Let's roll it. Here we go. We can't hear the... You, you just get to watch it. I just get to Please leave a message after the tone. Hey, sorry to be calling so late. I was just calling to see if you were awake and if you were, if you wanted to do me a favor. Um, I know I haven't called you in a while, but remember how you used to give me those neck massages when I'd get that really bad those like stress knots in my neck, like I hold all of my tension in my neck. Well, I have one of those knots again tonight. It's really bad, I can't sleep. So I was wondering if you'd be willing to come over and help me out. Um, I wouldn't be calling so late. I have these uh, electronic neck massages that I've been using which are great and they normally do the trick but they're both broken right now well they're not broken but the first one something's wrong with it the top it's like the screw on top and it's you screw the top on and it pushes down the battery and it starts the vibration but it's stuck for some reason I just can't get it to screw at all so and you like I ran it under hot water and um, <laughs> I took coconut oil and I lubricated the top and tried to loosen it up and I banged it against the countertop and whatever, it won't open. And then the second one, which, you know, I have two so that I have one on backup all the time, but the second one's battery died and it only uses these special petite batteries that we don't ever have in our house right now. Um, like, we have so many batteries also. I don't know... We just, but we don't have this specific kind, so, like, I tried a bunch of different, I, I tried some of the other ones that we have, but, um, none of them were working, or they just don't fit right, and, like, I don't want to force it if it wasn't the right fit, so, those are out of commission, and I tried to give myself a massage, but... When you're used to electronic massagers, it's just kind of anticlimactic, you know, to use your hands. And I wasn't going to call anyone else. I wouldn't be able to relax because you know how it takes me a little while to be comfortable. Um, and it's like ugh, when someone else is there, it's like they're in their, your personal space and you don't know if they're judging you, like your body, or if if they, like, you want them to know what they're doing. 
And honestly, I, like, really like my alone time. Usually, I light candles and watch something just to free my mind. And it's, it's usually great, but I just can't seem to hit this spot tonight. So, um, if you want to come over and help me out, uh, I really appreciate it. I, I miss you. Um, but you probably won't get this until tomorrow. But, you know, if not, um, okay, call me back. Bye. Titles. All right, but well, we're back. Okay, yeah. awesome. So yeah, so there, there's a few questions here, of course. Like, so what, what exactly is the what is the point of the video? <laughs> Helen is asking. So the point was one artistically, I wanted to explore live action. I wanted to explore kind of like blowing up my animated sets mm -hmm. to a live action mm -hmm. set um, because, you know, in animation you make everything You only yourself. had two weeks also, so... Yes, yeah, so I was like, hell no, am no I doing animation? No this time, no. No way, but I made all those, those backdrops, those mm -hmm. are giant paintings, mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to try to, like, kind of play with animation, mm -hmm. but in live action. So that was the artistic exploration. And then the content exploration was... You know, a lot of my work has to do with sexual themes, and mm -hmm. part of that is because I think, in light of like recent news, mm -hmm. um, I am get really frustrated by the stories that you hear about women's sexuality. Mm -hmm. It's always about assault, trauma, mm -hmm. or it's you know told through a male point of view, and women are objectified. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of want to try to tell authentic stories that explore women's sexuality mm -hmm. from the female gaze. Yes. So it's you know it's just supposed to be like a safe space to say. Mm -hmm. Hey, women have desires too, and yeah. we talk about it. And it's funny <laughs> and it's weird. And this got you the this pro project thirteen twenty four prize and uh, ignite Sundance ignite. Yes, so correct. A whole bunch of awards. Uh, the, the awards are on the movie actually. Yeah, so I, I'm really exciting. I've been screening at a lot of festivals. Here we can go back mm -hmm. here. Um, so uh, yeah, it won um, best experimental film at Nifty, which is the mm -hmm. National Film Festival for Talented Youth. And then I was just in New Orleans Film Festival mm -hmm. last week, and then uh, Los Angeles Film Festival this summer, um, and it will be screening at Citizen Jane, it actually might be this weekend or starting mm -hmm. November, and then Indie Memphis Film Festival. Okay. So it's kind of going all over, and uh, we just got a Vimeo staff pick this oh, week. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah, I think a lot of people are watching it all yeah, of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that makes all the difference when, when things are selected, like on Vimeo, on Instagram, or uh, yeah. Even on Behance, suddenly it, it like it's like a snowball effect, and um, yeah, uh, it really increases the the viewership organically. Yeah, it's been really great, and I, I really want to thank everyone who supported this project because I think it's gotten me a lot of um, people just have been watching it. There's this other really wonderful company, production company called The Front. Um, they're based in Brooklyn, and they're a female-led production company, and they share this film earlier in the year and they have a lot of great content mm. by women as well so if you like this maybe you should check out the other stuff that they make. Paul is saying I could see a film like this going in the arts festival here in the UK. Yeah. Oh, Yeah and cool. he's, he tweeted to Adobe Live, oh the Adobe Live, oh yeah maybe Paul Weaver would like contact yeah Adobe UK why not. Okay you know, sure I will. Yeah. Send Let's you get email. Emily to London you know. <laughs> I'd love to yeah who else wants to take me where? <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, oh, can't wait to see her on the, on the big screen someday. All right, okay. We have the, the GoPro experience again over here. Yeah, that's all the noise. But, and you know, I was kind of thinking, oh, today I'm super lucky because I'm not streaming at three. And they said, no, no, we changed it to 12.30. Okay, <laughs> my time. All right, Sorry. one question that I wanted to ask you on, on your website. Do you have any like early work? Yes. Like the early 
early Emily? Sure. Uh, so I started, I can show you one of the first animated things that I did. Um, <laughs> we love GoPro. Um, so this was one of the first animations I ever did at RISD. It was with my friend Ariel, who I made another short film with. Um, and so this is my puppet, a bunny puppet. And this is Ariel's lady puppet. Uh, we made this together. So that's a school project. Yeah, this is a school project, but one of the, that was the first animation puppet I ever made. Okay. And then, you know, it's, it's very silly and it's very, like, you can see we made everything out of cardboard. But it was really fun to work on, and Ariel and I had a really great working relationship. So we ended up making another short film together that kind of took us all over the festival okay. circuit. Um, and that one's also on Vimeo as a staff pick. So you guys can watch the Emily and Ariel show. This one, you know, we don't have to watch the whole thing. All right. <laughs> but it's, it's very silly, and uh, you can see <laughs> here I can show you um, yeah. like some. That's Ariel. That's me when I have long hair. Yeah, so I'm really silly. Some really stuff. So, and then I can show you. Um, oh, is this a Behance portfolio? No, this is Squarespace. No? Okay. I used to I used Behance a lot when I was at RISD, actually. Um, you, you know that uh, Behance has all this new portfolio capabilities. I haven't checked it out in a while. And you so can really put your work, you know, exactly in, you know, the in a very nice way. Cool. And put your URL on it. Yeah, maybe I'll. Check it out. Share some you know, just things. saying, you know. <laughs> Subtle plug there. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, so here's some some like set photos from the project that Ariel and I made together in school called the Emily and Ariel Show. And you know, we made everything out of cardboard and um, it's like this little toilet, here's a bed. Um, and we've got our puppets in there somewhere. Here are Ariel's puppet designs. Here are mine. So it actually had our faces on the puppets. Mm -hmm. um, here we are together. <laughs> um, and we, we do the Macarena in the, in the film. So that's us dancing. So this was actually, we did this also through rotoscope. Mm -hmm. So our process on this was that we actually filmed ourselves over the course of a night, just like hanging out, mm -hmm. drinking beer, talking. And then we edited that footage together mm -hmm. to make this like two I think it's two and a half minutes okay. sequence, and then we rotoscoped it with our puppets. So we okay. followed the movement of our puppets. So you can see the movement in that one um, is like is also very natural. We can watch like a little bit of it. I can just show you when we do the macarena. Um, oops, that's. that's the yeah. So here we're doing the macarena. So that was all us, <laughs> our actual dance moves that. Um, then we we followed. Wow. Yeah. I love the way you share the process on your on your website and like show also like little insights. And you said you had some um, some material that you wanted to show about. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can show some. So how I always start. Um, please forgive my horrible organization system. Um, uh, uh oh. I wonder if I still have it. Here is, let's see. Okay, so here's a mood board that I made for Nevada. Oh, the mood boards, that's yeah, right. Yeah, this was when I first started out. This was, you know, something I made in Photoshop, and, you know, it might be seem a little strange and mm -hmm. after seeing the film, but basically these are just things that I watched or had seen beforehand that this was kind of a pal that I wanted to draw from. It's supposed to take place in Northern California, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, these are, um, oh, I'm Not in Nevada. Okay. Not in Nevada, <laughs> I know. And I also realize I've been told by Westerners that I say it wrong. It's Nevada. 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 <laughs> okay. so I say Nevada. Um, but so this is, you know, stills from a film that I really like. That's a cool thing being European. I can say things yeah, you can any say way whatever, I want. And it's <laughs> like, oh, that's cute. That's oh, a cute European, accent. Yeah. <laughs> no, being from New York, it's just like, just say it right. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Sarah says, my project ADD will never allow me to dabble in this style. Huge admiration for your skills. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Wait, what won't allow her to dabble yeah, in why, this style? Yeah, why? What? You can do it. Yeah. You be more, do this. Be, be, yeah. Tell us a little bit more, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so mood boards. So yeah, so you, mood boards, um, I'm a big fan of Pinterest. 
Pinterest, I always start that's what by I was just gonna like, ask you, yeah. yeah, we could go, I could show you some Pinterest. Actually, that would be great, I could show you. Um, Sundance Ignite. So this was my my Pinterest board for Sundance. So this is, you know, a photographer Maisie Cousins, who I'm a really big fan of. I just love the lighting that she has, and she always has these women in like these very viscous, it's very textural work. Like it's very wet and sloppy, and she's got flowers and all this stuff. This is another Instagram artist I found. Well, they're not, they're artists, but I found them on Instagram. She does these amazing computer renderings of flowers, and I just love the lighting. I think the lighting was what really inspired me. Um, this is an illustration I made on Photoshop, just kind of like exploring a palette, exploring, exploring bananas. Um, so these were sketches that I made on, in Photoshop before I ever made those big paintings. So this is kind of just exploring the um, palette that I had. Um, again, these are, you know, just images that I found. Um, and, you know, Wes Anderson is obviously a huge inspiration. Just his, uh, his design sensibilities are really incredible. Ooh. Wes Anderson, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, you could take a still from any of his movies and it looks perfect. And I'm sure you guys saw the, the TV in my film. I really wanted this kind of like old VHS tape you know, old TV, so just trying to find images from that. Mm -hmm. And that animation actually that was done um, on uh, for OK Call Me Back was, uh, I don't know if I can find it, I'm not sure if I still have it. Everyone shout, GoPro, GoPro. Um, so here, let's see, that's Yeah, premiere. they're saying here, I hope Adobe charges GoPro for the advertising. <laughs> We're live. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't have the animation anymore, but um, this, this animation I did um, in After Effects. So this mm -hmm. was, this uh, background on the TV, you can see here on my Pinterest board, which is just one of the paintings that I made. Um, and then these, vegetables, fruit, and the flower, that was all, I animated that in After Effects. Okay, so you, you did that in After, because you're learning After Effects? Yes. So you said, ah, let's teach teach myself After Effects and do it. Exactly. So this is something typical that you would do in Photoshop as well, right? Yeah, so I did a lot of experiments in Photoshop beforehand. I usually start all of my projects in Photoshop, in okay. one way or another, like moving my mood boards around and uh, yeah. painting, picking palettes, and then I, you know, imported these images into Photoshop, and then I think I'm pretty sure I just imported the Photoshop file into After Effects okay. to just keyframe the movement. And of you the see, images. that's a, that's a cool thing about the um, the process here is, of, um, we, you know, almost all designers and creators that I that I interview here on Adobe Live, um, you know, always have their mood boards mostly on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess because it's the easiest way. It's just easy to gather images. Right? And then you don't have all these files on yeah, your yeah, whole yeah, yeah, yeah. computer. Uh -huh. And it's nice, it's good to access, and it's also a nice way of, of sharing it. Like, yeah. sharing the inspiration. Yeah, and I also have um, And you mentioned also your, um, uh, the, the storyboards, board. which you do by yes. hand. Yes, yeah, so I make yeah. the storyboards by hand. So the storyboards um, are somewhere in here. Here we go, storyboard. So this was the storyboard for Nevada. Um, and these I just drew by hand mm -hmm. and scanned in. And so these are what, these images are what I used in um, Premiere okay. to make my animatic. All right. So an animatic, for those of you who aren't familiar, is when you, you have your, you basically make a, a picture edit and an mm -hmm. audio edit of okay. your film. Mm -hmm. So using these images, I timed out exactly what shots would be where, mm -hmm. um, and then that also, you were asking before, what informed like the actual animation, the movement of the characters. This ended up informing that, okay. understanding the the timing between that. So these are all just hand drawn, and I've got. Um, let's 
yeah, so that's him on his phone on the couch. Yeah, that and that's the, that's show. that's also a very interesting point here that. Um, you know, storyboards don't need to be like, you know, the storyboards we see for Star Wars or uh, like crazy thing, crazy detail, you know? You don't you think know? that this is the best drawing you've ever this, seen? Oh, I, you know, <laughs> I was going to say, this is so good. <laughs> but it gives the idea, you know, and I think this is this is the main point when it's just like sketching, okay? Mm -hmm. Many people, uh, oh, no, I can't sketch. Sketching is all about, you know, laying down the initial idea, the position, you know, what's happening. And then you, you, you continue on that, right? Yeah. So, um, so I always enjoy seeing storyboards like that because um, it, it just goes to show you don't need to draw. Yeah. You know? like, as long as I understand it, as long as you know, the yeah. people that you're working with can vaguely understand it, I think these aren't the most incredible drawings you've ever seen, but like, you know, you know he's lying down yeah, looking exactly. at probably a phone. Or, yeah. you know, and then you've got the text on the side and then yeah, 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 yeah. it tells you. And the duration? No. Uh, no, not the duration in here. That okay. would be in um, oh, okay. in Premiere. I'd All figure right. out the okay. duration of the okay. image. Okay. Yeah. And I also have what I can show is um, my mood board for, or the my palette for Nevada. So here, so this is, these are the puppets without their clothes on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is when I first made them. Um, and these, I just, you know, selected this is all done in Photoshop, figuring out the palette. I made these puppets first and then figured out what the, the visuals would be. So this, you know, this purple is what I painted the colors of the wall in the house. And then the pink is the color of the bedspread. And, you know, there's other things, all of those colors. And then, so this is before I made um, uh, the actual set. So then this is, you know, just something I made another gif like with all the colors just figuring out because it's moving how they move in space and how these characters would look against those uh, backdrops yeah um and i've also got some behind the scenes footage to show you guys i can show you laura um, says my storyboard is almost stick figures ha 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 yes perfect why not you that's know? great yeah. yeah you don't need them to be and paul says that. i would never show anyone my storyboards i would be so embarrassed <gasps> No. <laughs> Should I be embarrassed? Is that what Paul is saying? No, I don't think so. No, I would never show anyone my storyboards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think it's, you know, it's, that was also a learning process because this is the first project I worked on with a team of people besides just like me and one collaborator. And so it's really easy to be embarrassed of your art, of your yeah, ideas, yeah. of my writing. I was really embarrassed. Mm -hmm. I was writing jokes that I wasn't <laughs> sure if people would be thought think were funny or if they'd just uh -huh. be like, this is really weird. And yeah. so I think, A, it's really important to find someone who you have a good relationship mm -hmm. with. So my producer, Sean, we have a really great relationship. He's one of my great friends now. Um, and it was always, you know, a back and forth of, you know, sharing art is vulnerable and so having someone a critique uh, community that is respectful of your work but is also able to tell you that's a bad choice and maybe you should rethink yeah. it. Yeah, do, do you test things out on social? Like Sometimes you, on social. You made that gif of yeah. the characters animated over a background or a color or something. Yeah. Would you ask the larger community or? I do put it on social media. That gif I posted on my Instagram. Um, I don't necessarily think of that as like a I don't directly ask people, mm -hmm. but it does help, like, you know, to people get commenting the, the on mood, it. You know, Obviously, like, I, you know, <laughs> do I they like it? Don't they? Do there's not a million people commenting on it, so it's mostly just my friends being nice. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe it's not the best gauge, but mm -hmm. I always show, share with friends or mm -hmm. peers who are mm -hmm. artists. And that's why this program in Westchester, Creative Culture, is so important because. Mm -hmm. I was the only animator in the program at the time, and someone else was a documentary filmmaker, you know, someone was making a music video. We're all doing really different things, but we can all make creative critiques of yeah. each other's work. Um, yeah. So this was uh, just a, a video. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you wanted to show these yeah, as well. Yeah, of me. This is me animating. So that's Eli, the male character. Um, let's see if we can get a scope of how big it is. That's just me going back and forth. Um, and this is uh, this is Dragon Frame. It's a program. It's a stop motion program. Oh. Um, so I don't know if Adobe has any stop motion programs, mm, no. but they should. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So Dragon Frame's really great. It just helps you capture the images. Um, so you know exactly what was the frame before. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so it so, doesn't move. Or... Yeah. It has the onion skinny feature. Oh, that's mm -hmm. my face. 
Um, let's see. Yeah, so you can kind of get an idea of how big the set is. Um, where the camera is. So the walls were all removable mm -hmm. so that I could shoot at any angle um, at any point. Yeah, here we go. That's the big It's almost deal. like a telenovela set. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, it's very fake. So, um, yeah, this is the basement of the film center and mm -hmm. that's Dragon Frame keypad and just, you know, sh slowly but surely moving him a little bit and then taking a picture, mm -hmm. move a little bit, take a photo and that's wow. how it works. So and okay, so I I understand you're you're moving the person, like the puppet, uh, almost a person. Um, how do you know? So where where is your information of what exactly he's about to do? So I because you see what he's just done. Yes. So how do you do? You, do you visualize everything in your head and like just go ahead and make him walk or yeah. move or? For the most part, it's visualizing in my head. Um, Every animator has a different style, and I think on like a lot of bigger projects, like you know, Leica is a huge stop motion mm -hmm. uh, studio, and they they plan every movement mm -hmm. to the nines, to the T. And I, um, because I'm a smaller entity, and I that's how I like to animate is mm -hmm. just kind of going with the natural body movement. So it kind of goes along with what I was saying before, where I'll act it out a lot yeah. myself. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, he's, it, it happens just subconsciously, like okay. wanting him to head tilt, I'll kind of just... So, Moatas is saying, this is really interesting, and Camila, hard work, and Brandy says, thank you for being so open and honest about your process and willing to show us how it's made. Well, yeah, of course. that's what Adobe Live is all about, yeah. you know? <laughs> and I think it's like, if yeah. people are saying they're intimidated to do this type of stuff, I was mm -hmm. just as intimidated, yeah. and I think it's... Do it. Yeah, like Emily came and said, oh, so I have to show Premiere and After Effects. And, well, she did a little bit, but that's not the, that's not the point here. <laughs> I think that was super interesting to see uh, your process. And maybe that now that we've talked everything over, maybe we can just watch these few seconds again of the uh, that we saw at the beginning. Of the film? Sure, yeah, yeah that would be great. And that's the, that's the next film that's going to go out? Yeah, so it's not online yet, but it's going to be we screening. Have, in we have two minutes, places. so let's okay. just make one minute of it. So here we go. Oops. So that's Oops. where we have the, um, the stop motion, mm -hmm. we have the set, we have the rotoscoping on the, uh, on the faces. And if you missed the beginning, well, you can watch the replay on the uh, Adobe Creative Cloud YouTube channel. As soon as this is over, it's going to be there. So Emily, do you have a link to check some more stop motion? Well, go to our website, Gabby. Yes, ehoffmanportfolio.com mm -hmm. is my website. Wait, yep. And I've got um, most of my work is up there, okay. including you know some of the stuff from college. That's yeah. just that's awesome. Messing around. That's the best stuff. That's you know that's that's how that what shows you your me to try some the growth. I hope. No, well, not only the growth, <laughs> but your history. You know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It's yeah. so, it, and I think it's, you know, whenever I Google my, these videos, for example, you know, it's just a suggestion. We see each, uh, we see each other over time with Michael and said, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the progress, you know? Yeah. yeah. Great stuff. Exactly. So Emily, thank you so much for sharing. Um, uh, thank you in the chat for participating. Thanks, guys. And um, love, okay. So Pamela, loved your live action piece too. Yeah, okay, that's the one that won you the Project 1324 and the, uh, um, uh, the Sundance Ignite um, prize as well. Yes. All right, and Camila says good work. And uh, we're going to be right back with some graphic design and packaging with Ann Sanders, hosted by Paul Trani. And Emily, again, thank you and good luck with these new animations of yours. Thank you I love so them. much. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. It was Stay great to tuned. be here. Bye. Woo!